Let's uh, also think about the world in this pandemic year. You know, the whole world is now being affected by COVID-19 pandemic. So when we are talking about development, we cannot do that without, uh, without uh, taking into account uh, the impact of the pandemic, global pandemic. The United Nations Secretary General said the world faces the most challenging crisis since World War II, confronting a pandemic threatening people in every country that will bring a recession that probably has no parallel in the recent past. And actually he said this last year, but the crisis is still going on. Well, I'd like to give you kind of five key words to think about um, in, uh, in trying to, you know, analyze what's going on and what would be the impact of this pandemic crisis. Two short-term keywords are global public health crisis and economic depression. And three long-term uh, keywords are U.S.-China rivalry, confrontation between globalism and nationalism, and dispute over state-centered and people-centered approach. First keyword, global public health crisis. You know, there is no, we don't need any explanation to understand that this is the biggest public health crisis in our generation, in our lifetime. You know, when what was called Spanish flu crisis occurred, that was 100 years ago. So we were not around that time. So this is the biggest crisis in our generation. At the moment, when I'm talking, um, you know, we have uh, close to 100 million confirmed cases in the world and more than 2 million deaths in the world. The second keyword, global economic depression. Um, you know, we have kind of cyclical, regular uh, global economic recessions almost every 10 years. But when recession is really, really bad, we sometimes call it depression. You know, there was a, what was called global depression um, in 1929. And nobody knows whether this uh, economic recession will be as bad as that. But, uh, you know, last year, uh, 2020, uh, the, the global economy contracted uh, by 4 to 5 percent. We don't have the, uh, we don't have the final uh, statistics yet, but the IMF's prediction that was uh, revised last time was uh, uh, minus 4.4 percent for the world and to varying degrees all the major economies in the world uh, are suffering mostly uh, negative growth but what is more serious than the recession is uh, the fact that uh, inequality is now being uh, exacerbated, you know. Inequality has always been growing, at least during the last uh, several decades. But um, this kind of uh, uh, global crisis is uh, making it worse. And in this post-pandemic world, there is this question that, uh, you know, whether the, the so-called fourth industrial revolution technologies would contribute to increasing or decreasing inequality. There was a lot of debate, but going through this pandemic crisis, at least uh, I think, you know, uh, these new technologies are not helping, uh, you know, uh, reducing uh, inequality. On the other hand, Inequality might even further grow. Uh, if you think about, for example, let's say we have robots 
that will help our daily life? Do you think robots will be available to everyone in the world or only rich people first? If you think about it, you would understand why I think the, even these fourth industrial revolution technologies uh, will not help much uh, in reducing inequality. The third keyword is uh, US-China rivalry. The rivalry was already there before the pandemic, uh, but through this pandemic, this rivalry is getting, uh, getting more conspicuous, you know, not least because COVID-19 started in China. And, uh, you know, uh, with the new administration in the United States, I think uh, the, the, the way they compete, the, they, the way they uh, settle their disputes uh, would not be as, uh, as confrontational as uh, uh, during President Trump's days, but still the nature of this rivalry, this competition will, uh, will have to go on for quite a while. The fourth keyword is uh, globalism as opposed to nationalism. If you think about it, um, in this globalized world, what we need is uh, unity and cooperation among nations. You know, we have more global problems, so we need global unity and global cooperation. That's very natural. It doesn't take rocket science to understand that. But what we are witnessing in real world is almost the other way around. Countries are, you know, instead of uh, uh, joining force, countries are blaming each other. Countries are fighting each other. So that's, that's kind of uh, uh, frustrating, you know, as you witness during uh, President Trump's time, you know, for example, he, he always uh, insisted that uh, policy called America first and um, th there have been some, you know, rise of nationalism in, in, in Europe as well. So it's, uh, it's kind of uh, not easy to understand why nations, instead of uh, working together, instead of uh, uh, going for unity, why they uh, continue to fight or even uh, fight more in the age of globalization, but that's one important feature of, of a post-pandemic world, I think. The last keyword I want to suggest is a, a kind of a confrontation between state-centered approach and people-centered or society-centered approach. Before the pandemic, in this globalized uh, world, you know, um, it's not just government who are uh, exchanging with other countries, who are working with other countries, but non-governmental sectors like civil society, like private sector, corporate sector, all of them were already uh, very active in working uh, beyond borders, across borders. So sometimes we thought we are getting into a borderless world. But all of a sudden, with the COVID-19 pandemic, countries are controlling their borders. You cannot travel to other countries freely anymore. So the role of government is coming back and is getting strengthened. So the question is, after the end of pandemic, will we go back to the world where government control is weak and non-governmental players are moving around, working around freely? That would be a big question as well. The impact of COVID-19 is very uh, negative on all the SDGs, all the 17 SDGs. Well, 
you can say that there are some SDGs that are less affected. For example, uh, SDG on energy, because due to the pandemic, people are not using much of energy. So temporarily, uh, that might look like you know, helping. But other than these few, there are uh, all negative impacts on SDGs uh, from the pandemic crisis. So under the circumstances, what can youth do to contribute to global sustainable development in the post-pandemic era? That's my final question. And I want to give you these questions for your consideration. Um, I don't want to read them. You can read, read it for yourselves. And as I said, there are several, many important global challenges, global problems that are created by globalization or exacerbated by globalization. So we need to deal with them